along with my colleagues from the, the Caribbean Aquaculture Network, um, led by Dr. Rousseau, we believe that if we're serious about uh, blue economy um, development, marine spatial planning development, um, ecosystem approach to fisheries and so on, research um, based in the Caribbean and or conducted in a Caribbean context is critical to this um, in terms of making dec decision making and de developing. Now, one of these areas that we identified as priority and potential is, is the mariculture culture of sea cucumbers. So <clears throat> sea cucumber aquaculture has great potential in, in the world. And why not in the Caribbean? There's high prices, especially in the Asian markets, as high as 400 uh, US per, per kilogram. Here in the Caribbean, we have seven commercial important species. And throughout the region, we have ex most stocks, local stocks are either overfished or on their way to being overfished. Uh, in terms of legal catch, we have seen at least a 13 fold increase in, in the last decade or so. And so we have an opportunity and we have identified Holotheria mexicana as a species with great mariculture potential. It is it's a very resilient species, even in the, even in the face of high um, fishing effort, fishing pressure, and others can become very large. Uh, they can achieve market size, market weight, um, within 12 to 18 months. And in the, in the dry sea cucumber market, um, prices are often linear with weight. And with a species that can grow so well, it's a great opportunity to take advantage of that here in the Caribbean. So using my culture, if we're able to, to reduce the, the juvenile mortality, increasing survival, then we can take advantage of these markets. So we, we face a number of challenges, but let's look at the opportunities. We have, look, we have, we have local um, low-tech mariculture technology that has been being that is being used currently being used in this region in countries such as Mexico, which have made a lot of connections, Panama, and I think in Belize as well. Um, <clears throat> for this species, it requires low startup costs. Of course, I mentioned high prices, and we have great opportunity for for building community resilience in terms of livelihoods and for recuperating uh, and, conserving, and conserving wild stocks. In terms of the challenges that we face generally, even though we have really great scientists in the Caribbean, we lack the, the knowledge and the specific knowledge and capacity to impl implement production system as it relates to, to sea cucumber. Generally, a poor understanding of value chains, which is critical to the type of production system that you'd want to implement. And aquaculture in general, not just mariculture, in general, in this region, because of our dependence on imports and high energy, um, input costs are often fairly high. And being small island states, most of us, space and conflict with, with various users and stakeholders is an issue. And as been mentioned before in a previous presentation, the enabling governance framework for aquaculture is not very well developed. So specific um specific research can go a far way in in addressing or helping or laying the foundation for addressing this so for this work uh the objective is to evaluate our culture gear our culture technology for a cucumber my culture to determine its technological and economic viability um in discovery in a discovery Bay jamaica which is a case study um as an alternative livelihood for coastal communities of course, with the view to having to being able to be scaled up and transferred, especially in a Caribbean context, which is a which is a theme of the study. So the, the Discovery Bay Jamaica was was identified as one of several of six high density hotspots for both juvenile juveniles and and adults, based on two comprehensive surveys, which took place. Um, between 2017 and, two, and, year, and 2020, I think. So, but what makes Discovery Bay on this side particularly 
um, suitable. It's a protected area that we can control variables. Um, this species has been found in high numbers, in great good sizes, and the the substrate and general oceanic conditions are ideal. So we have a great a good knowledge of the of the the biology and the ecology of the species and the area, as well as um, a known stock of juveniles which we can use as seed. So the idea and method is generally to <clears throat> to collect juveniles less than 50 grams and less than than 10 centimeters, which we can, we can collect and put in a basic waiting area, basic lab setup, and then that can be transferred uh, to. <clears throat> to cages for growth. But before we do that, of course, throughout the process, we are collecting detailed um, cost information, which, which is critical to the viability, the economic viability aspect of the analysis. And, and so as we go, we go along, we are taking this information, um, bearing in mind that this is um, being done to ensure that the, the, the results can, can be applicable in a Caribbean context and is viable economic, economically. So the actual growth, so once we have the juveniles, the growth is such that the treatment is such that is we'll be using three three designs, three three um, set, three sets of dimensions and three treatments with constant densities suited to the area that we are <coughs> that we replace the, the, the instruments. So in all, three, three, three treatments, three replicates, nine, and we'll be testing throughout the process uh, or measuring throughout the process or monitoring performance variables growth in terms of weight, bearing in mind the markets, the, the markets and the survival rate, which is it's a critical part of, of, um, of the process of proving vi viability as less than 70% um, survival is often not profitable, especially in a developing country context, especially in Asia. I will not bore you with the, I didn't want to bore you with the mathematical aspect of it, so I simplified it. So once we have the, the biological and socioeconomic data, we can generally plug that into a math mathematical model and we can test the output in terms of harvest and profit of each um of each treatment and and to to evaluate on on that basis of course we can add um an over analysis as well to test how the the intra group um re relation between the performance among the performances of the of the groups so <clears throat> as i said it's an ongoing project it's uh so we are we're at the point so while we are working we are um, seeking additional funding, making additional partners. So I have already, we have already, as I mentioned before, um, we have the group, um, the Caribbean Agriculture Network, um, university in, in, in Mexico, partners in the agriculture, aquaponics group in Mexico as well, and Panama. And through this forum, I hope to have um, additional partners because the goal is towards um, if not a hatchery, at least be able to expand this work around Jamaica and first of all, and then towards the Caribbean. So over the next 18 months, we'll be carrying out this, this work and, and, and adapting the work based on the resources that we have. And hopefully, at least in the next, by the end of this 18 months or within this 18 months, starting from the here um, month 13, we hope to have at least three three documents reporting documents two regarding policy and um, best practices or for mariculture um, in the caribbean in a caribbean context and possibly as well a, a research paper that can be published so um thank you so much and i hope i can have a few questions and a few partners <laughs> thank you so much Thank you, Mr. Morris. I appreciate that presentation. It was very well done. Thank you. Um, do we have any, I see we have a question from Mr. Gregory Kong. Uh, um, 
first of all, th thank you, Chair. Um, excellent presentation, Dr. Morris. Um, thank you, as sir. expected, as <laughs> expected. Uh, the, the significant potential for aquaculture development, um, as you have rightly um, um, identified, must be facilitated by an en enabling environment, which includes suitable policy and legal frameworks. Absolutely. And um, I, I, I think that one of the significant uh, well, first, you have rightly identified marine protected areas as one of the, the legal um, system that can facilitate mariculture activity because these protected areas have the necessary ingredient to, 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 to facilitate exclusive use of maritime space. But one of the critical gap is, is, is a proper legal regime for mariculture in general. Because, mm -hmm. as you know, in many jurisdictions, um, the, the, the high water, the, the, uh, below the high water mark is vested in the crown. And they are, they are, um, we don't have any developed legal regime to facilitate mm -hmm. exclusive use of maritime space. So, so um, I have every confidence that in terms of the, 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 the culture in aspects and all the various things that should be done, um, there are many examples across the region and across the world, and we have the, the brain power here to, to deal with that. But I think we need to start the process of developing the proper legal regime that can facilitate this um, system where we can have exclusive use of marine space so that we can encourage private sector investment and operation. So I'm just saying that a, a proper legal analysis um, needs to be done looking at the jurisprudence and existing legal regime across the region. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make that very important point because I think we have most of the other ingredients there, but we need to, to, to finish the process so we can move on to develop this um, important, um, aquaculture, these important aquaculture activities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Mr. Kong. I must call you doctor there. <laughs> well, uh, it's, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, we hope that um, the results of this project at least can can go a far away in one of, one of those reports that I mentioned, at least those all of those reports that I mentioned, I hope can go towards, first of all, developing a specific mariculture policy for Jamaica, um, because that's where we are basing the, at least this initial part of the project that can go towards laying the foundation for addressing those, um, the, the enabling the legal enabling environment that you mentioned. So absolutely, that's that's a key part of what we want to do here. I see Mr. Houghton also has a question. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks, uh, Ricardo, for the excellent presentation. Um, I have a question for you and uh, the, the rest of the aquaculture experts here. Um, we are interested in promoting integrated multi-trophic uh, aquaculture. Um, a team from the region visited China and saw the um, saw IMTA in operation. And what is really attractive about it is the fact that this this approach um, is able to rehabilitate <laughs> degraded marine environments while producing useful marine organisms for food and for other purposes mm -hmm. and so it's very intriguing the studies that we have looked at uh, you know seem very solid <laughs> and i tell you what they did in the yellow sea in japan sorry in china and korea is a you know it's an international project um what really looks impressive <laughs> um so i just want wanted to get your thoughts on this and because, because we are we are we are seeking to promote um, that type of um, approach to aquaculture um, in the region. You know, of course, testing through a pilot to see you know it, it, it would work the same way. But based on what has been, what I've seen and the science, it seems to be quite a solid approach, which address one of the main problems with aquaculture, and that is the pollution of the marine environment. But this is doing the opposite by you know growing multiple organism and really trying to mimic the ecosystem really you know you know you produce uh, in the marine environment also. thank you i mean from from this from this project's um point of view we we actually bearing that in mind because um 
the the, restor the restoration, for example, of sea cucumber wild sea cucumber stocks, um, it it affects uh, organism at, at various trophic levels. And so, when we're taking an eco uh, ecological approach, um, but even though we are focusing on one species, you know, we are we are doing it, it bearing in mind the potential for, as you mentioned, the, the multi-trophic um, approach to, to aquaculture development. Um, and so we, we, but in many cases, we don't, we don't have the first, we haven't put the first brick down in terms of the, the research and the groundwork. In Jamaica, fortunately, we have done a survey, for example, we have a, 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 an extensive survey for, for sea cucumber. So we can at least lay the foundation for for uh, building on that with other species, and not, with not just animal species, but plants, seaweed, et cetera. Because we have seen that there's multiple benefits to be had from, from seaweed culture, um, benefits to be had by, by species such as, such as uh, seaweed, lobster, conch, and so forth. So is, I think an approach, the best approach would be to, to lay the foundation in terms of research so that we can put these things in place um, in the Caribbean and in a Caribbean context. Thank you again, Mr. Morris, for your...